Hello everyone and welcome to Shell Point Today for Wednesday, November the 30th. I'm Rich Nation. Coming up on today's show, Ruth Duber will have another delicious recipe to show us how to prepare. And the folks at Findmark Bank on the island will discuss their investment services available. But first, don't forget about tomorrow evening's annual tree lighting ceremony. It will be a Nutcracker Christmas at Friendship Point Amphitheater on the island. The Naples Carolers and the Dance Warehouse will work together to perform the Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairies. There will be roasted nuts, Christmas cookies, and coffee for everyone to enjoy. Come kick off the Christmas season at 5.45 p.m. with the entertainment and the tree lighting happening at 6.30. It's Wednesday, and if you've been paying attention lately, then you already know what to watch next. It's an installment of What's Cooking at Shell Point. Yes, Ruth Duber is back in the kitchen again today, and she is making stuffed mushrooms. How do you stuff a mushroom, and with what exactly do you stuff it with? Well, I guess we'll have to watch this to find out. Hi, I'm David Lee, and what's cooking at Shell Point? And, and I'm Ruth Duber, and uh, today David and I are going to do some adventurous things. Actually, we're trying to shoot three shows at <laughs> at, at one time. Trying so. maybe the yeah, pretty <laughs> we'll word. We'll see yeah. how it goes. Yes. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is stuffed mushrooms with brie cheese. Now um, I have a big batch. It's in the oven, and David's going to watch that for me. Uh, you can use any size mushrooms. Um, I kind of like these. These are more or less, you know, pop in your mouth in one bite. Uh, the ones in the oven are a little larger. And basically what you do is you melt some butter, and it calls for two tablespoons of butter, but this is a half a recipe. So the one on the website will be the full recipe like the one in the oven. So David's going to take these over and okay. going to uh, one side and then the other side for just a couple minutes. Put them in the, in the butter? In the butter, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. The other ingredients are, um, let's see, it calls for minced garlic. And... In this batch, I'm using garlic, but in honor of David's uh, being allergic to garlic, I did use shallots. And I only had one small shallot, and I thought, well, I had these. Uh, they're called air-dried shallots. And actually, they, sh they look just, you know, like regular chopped shallots. If you put them in, in some oil, you know, they look just like real shallots. So I did use some of that, but in my half batch, I'm going to use the garlic, which is what they call for. And uh, some green onions, and a little hint for you. The best buy in green onions is Colleen's on our, at our Friday market. Her green onions um, are, they're larger, uh, and they're less expensive, really. Uh, this was $1.99 at Publix, and uh, they're really kind of wimpy. So buy your green onions at Colleen's at the market. And then, of course, we have the brie. So, uh, and it calls for just a splash of wine. So we're going to see how David's doing over here. How do these look, Ruth? But, yeah, do it some more. Do it some more. Yeah, do it some more. Okay. <laughs> and I'll do this. Yeah, actually, you want them to sort of pre-cook. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Now you can put them in this dish. And now we're going to go over and we're going to put in the green onions and the garlic. This is not the ones you're going to eat. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for thinking of me. Mm -hmm. So you stir that around. I was learning, you always got to watch your, your oh, garlic, garlic because it'll so burn easily. so easily. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be poured over the mushrooms before we put in the brie cheese. The, yeah. I, I have the temperature pretty high, which means don't turn your back on this at all. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, I want to get it done in, 
because you mm -hmm. don't want them to brown. Mm -hmm. Now you can pour now a little pour wine with it there. A little white you wine. Can also use chicken broth. So. David, step back a little bit. Let me check the mushrooms that are in there. Aha! And they are ready. Mm. Oh, wish you could, you could smell <laughs> what's happening here. Don't they look delicious? Yeah. All righty. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Just oh, put it right in there. Mm -hmm. There we go. Let's we'll stir that up a little bit. And it should be nice and cooked down. Mm -hmm. And now you just want me to. Uh huh. Yeah. Now, I don't mind the rind. I don't, I don't either. <laughs> so you can start putting that on the mushrooms. Is that what you need? Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. Alrighty. So now we'll bring the pan over and we're going to taste. Huh. Doesn't that look good? Let's try the tiny ones. <laughs> there they are. Aren't they beautiful? I just love them. Yeah. Okay, we'll cut one in half. Although you don't need to. Okay. Oh. Ladies first. Mm hmm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. Mm -hmm. You can't eat just a half of one, though, Ruth. <laughs> mm. Alrighty, we're going to put this recipe up on the website, and I hope you'll try it. This is pretty nice for the holidays coming up. Uh, you can make these way ahead and just pop them in the oven before you're ready to serve. So, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye now. Here at Shell Point on the island, you're probably aware that we have a bank. Fine Mark National Bank and Trust is available for all of your banking needs. But did you know that they offer investment services too? Jessica Stillwell Caddy is in our studios today to discuss these services and why you might want to pay them a visit. Hello, I'm Jessica Stillwell Caddy with Finemark National Bank and Trust. And today we are talking about investment services. And many of you on the island probably bank with Finemark, or at least we hope you do. But we also are a trust company with investment services. So today I'm joined by private wealth advisors, Chris Smith and Dennis Landfried, to talk about these investment services. And, and Chris, I'll start with you. What happens when someone first approaches or comes to meet with you to talk about those services? Well, Jessica, the first thing we like to do is sit down with the client, the prospective client, and get to know them, get to know their family situation. We also like to get to know their overall financial goals. And then secondly, we like to do a comprehensive review of all their investable assets. So why, and I know this is really big at Finemark, why is it so important to really get to know the person and the family? Not just the person, but also the family. So there's different situations mm -hmm. that might come up in the relationship that you can help by knowing the family whether it's a son or a daughter or a son-in-law or a daughter-in-law. And then I would assume, too, just knowing the person to really understand what they want. And Absolutely, absolutely. Dennis, let's talk about 
to then your next step when you're creating that plan and yeah. and objectives and what we're really trying to seek. And I know a big part of that is is risk too and what you're willing and able to risk. Yeah, so, so our culture is very different than a lot of other organizations in the fact that we like to get to know our clients really, really well. And when you do that, you know, everyone has their own objective for what they need their assets to do, and everyone has their own definition of risk. So, you know, we've, we've all worked for other companies that um, really kind of work out of a box. And, you know, at Findmark, we create the box for, for the client. So we want the client to define r the risk, and we want, to port we want to tailor the portfolio to the client to meet their objective by taking the least amount of risk possible. And, and you and I were talking a little while ago before we were on this segment, and we were talking about sometimes what happens, and especially as people get older, they have money in a lot of different places being managed by different people, and they may not actually know the risk that they're taking. Right, right. So, so when you, we always like to take a step back and look at the big picture because we never want to manage in a vacuum. And what I mean by that is if, if a client has multiple buckets of assets and they, they have advisors that kind of stick to their knitting and they manage uh, their bucket and they're not looking at the big picture, there could be a lot of overlap and they could be exposed to a lot of risk that um, they may, might not otherwise have. If you have money in different places, make sure that whoever your advisor is, they're advising not just for the accounts that they actually manage, but looking at everything that you have. I mean, that's the total relationship, and I think that's what we really do at Finemark. I would agree. I, I think we feel like we have a fiduciary responsibility to do that for our clients. And, and we and, do it in every case. And really, not that we feel like we have a fiduciary responsibility, but as a trust company, um, we actually do have a fiduciary responsibility versus a suitability responsibility. So, Chris, do you want to talk about that, sure, just the difference? Sure. So as a trust company, like you said, we are held to the higher standard of fiduciary services. And not only do we have to have the investment be suitable, but it has to be the best for the client. Well, thank you both for talking to us about this today. I think it's, it's important um, to make sure that everyone understands what they're talking about when they're talking about their investments. So thank you both. And if you are interested in talking to Chris or Dennis or anyone at Finemark, you can do that by calling Anna Smith. She's our managing executive at Finemark on the Island at 461-5999, 461 I'm Jessica Stoll Caddy with Finemark Bank. Have a great day. And now it's time to cover all of today's happenings, menus, and Village Church Connections. Hi everyone and welcome to the Happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Dora Robbins and I'm here to tell you about all the activities today here at Shell Point. We're going to start at 745 with Men's Bible Study that's in the Offspray Room. At 8 o'clock we have Pickleball and that's at the Game Court on the Island. At 845, Lily and Company will be here for their weekly jewelry service that's at the Res Resident Activity Center. At 9 o'clock, it's Jurassic Travel that's going to be in the Egret Room um, on the island. Watercolor Group with Phil Hilton is at 9 o'clock in the Art Studio. Card Making and Scrapbooking is going to be in the Tarpon Room in the Tunnel at 9.15. And at 10 o'clock, it's Ladies Bible Study in the Offspear Room. At 10.15, it's Key Lime Bistro for lunch on Cap Captiva Island. Um, the bus leaves the island at 10.15. The Woodlands at 1025 and Estuary in Eagles Preserve at 1035. Sign up is required for that. At 1015, Model Yacht Sailing Club that's at the Commons Lake at the Woodlands. And at 1130, we have a Health Connection Bar Ball Edition that's at the Health Club that's currently closed. At 1245, we have a Health Connection Strength and Conditioning. Sign up is required for that. And at 1 o'clock, it's chess at the Library Lounge um, on the island. At 1.15, we have Fall Bingo, and that's going to be in the Social Center on the island. At 2.30, it's Jazz and Stuff at the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands. And at 3 o'clock, we have a Health Connections Pilates Bar Fusion, and that's at the Health Club. At 4.30, Indoor Bocce, that's at the Health Club on the island. And at 5 o'clock, we have Singles Table at the Crystal Dining Room. At 5.45, it's church choir in the choir room at the Village Church. 
And the last activity is at 715. It's prayer and praise at the Village Church. Thank you, and we'll see you all back here again tomorrow. Menus for Wednesday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is chicken parmesan with angel hair pasta and broccoli. For dinner, they are featuring their dinner buffet for $14.95. The soup of the day is tortilla. In the Island Cafe, the sandwich special is clam strips on a grilled New England roll with coleslaw for $7.95. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill are shrimp and scallops creole for $17.95 or Danish blue cheese crusted tornados for $18.95. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm David Pavey. Anyone who has traveled on London's underground is familiar with the warning, mind the gap. It's to be found on the platform itself and is also delivered as an audible announcement on the train, as a warning to passengers to be careful while entering or leaving the train, due to the gap between the train door and the platform when the station is built on a curve. Look at it this way. You can place two straight lines side by side with no gap between them because they're parallel. But if one of the lines is curved and the other straight, the lines can touch in the middle with a gap at both ends, or touch at both ends with a gap in the middle. So when a train station is built on a curve and a passenger car is straight, inevitably there is a gap between the edge of the train and the edge of the platform. Other parts of the world with historical links to the United Kingdom have adopted the warning. Australia, for example, mind the gap. I mention this because the other day, my wife and I read a passage by Jennifer Benson Schult in the Daily Bread devotional booklet, which is available free of charge in the church lobby, by the way. It's about an Australian by the name of Nicholas Taylor, who failed to mind the gap while boarding a train recently. A railroad spokesman told ABC News, that Nicholas Taylor was walking onto a train at Stirling Station in Perth on the west coast of Australia at 8.50 a.m. local time when he slipped, resulting in one of his legs being wedged in the gap and the other on the train that was packed with commuters. Unable to pull his leg up as the gap was too small, he was well and truly stuck in a rather undignified position. A station agent quickly alerted the driver to make sure the train didn't move, and then station staff asked all capable passengers to get off the train and organize them to lean on the train and push on it simultaneously in an effort to ease the car away from the platform and so enlarge the gap by a few inches. And it worked. Poor Nicholas was eventually able to extricate his offending leg from the gap. Paramedics soon declared that Nicholas had not sustained any serious injuries, so he was able to board the train and continue his journey, albeit this time minding the gap. Now we use the word gap in several contexts today. There's a generational gap, for example. Author Milton Greenblatt put it well. First we're children to our parents, then we're parents to our children, then we're parents to our parents, and then we're children to our children. Then there's the culture gap, the difference between two cultures which hinders mutual understanding or relations. There's also the moral gap between those who derive their sense of right and wrong from a source outside themselves, such as the Creator, Redeemer, Almighty God via the Bible, and those who don't. And then for us who profess to love God and seek to obey him, there's the gap between what we know is right and what we do or don't do. It's the gap between our conscience and our behavior. Ah, yes, conscience, described as the inner voice that warns us somebody may be looking, wrote journalist H.L. Mencken. Even the Apostle Paul knew about the gap between conscience and action. I want to do what is right, but I don't do it, he wrote. Instead, I do what I hate. 
When a friend of mine passed away recently, the speaker at his memorial service commented his life was lined up with his conscience. In other words, there was no apparent gap between his conscience and his behavior. No gap between his private life and his public life. He was a man of integrity. Wrote the Apostle James, don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourself. For if you listen to the word and you don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you looked like. I think of the last lines of Dale Wimbrough's poem about the man in the mirror. You can fool the whole world down the pathway of years and get pats on the back as you pass, but your final reward will be heartaches and tears if you've cheated the guy in the glass. None of us is morally perfect, of course. So how do we handle it when we mess up and the guy in the glass rebukes us? What happens when we admit the gap between our conduct and our conscience? The Apostle John assures us that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Nicholas Taylor knew he had to be careful getting onto the train, but he failed to pay attention. May God help us to honor our conscience and be careful how we live. An old hymn puts it well. Lord, help us this and every day to live more nearly as we pray. Mind the gap, okay? And thank you for tuning in once again to Village Church Connections. Thanks for joining us for today's program. Return tomorrow when we will learn about next week's gift shop extravaganza, just in time for Christmas. And we'll take a trip aboard the Suzy Q as they sail out to Parrot Key Restaurant. Until then, this has been Shell Point Today for Wednesday, November 30th. I'm Rich Nation, and on behalf of everyone here at SPTV, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll look forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. <music>